On February 24th, Russia launched an invasion of Ukraine, which is still ongoing. But this is not the start of the war in Ukraine. This isn't even the first time that Russia has perpetrated an invasion. In 2008, Russia invaded the sovereign nation of Georgia on the eastern shore of the Black Sea. Russia took the side of a separatist minority within Georgia as a way of weakening a pro-Western neighbor and increasing its control over its border region. Russia accused Georgia of committing genocide. The Russian invasion allowed the separatist areas to gain independence from Georgia. And the West did nothing of real import other than condemning the invasion, in spite of the violation of international law. And relations between Russia and the West remained pretty much unchanged. This was the first European war of the 21st century. And it was mostly ignored. Probably most of us don't even remember it. Like the occupation of Czechoslovakia by Germany in 1938, Western nations stood by and let it happen. In 2014, Russia invaded Ukraine for the first time by attacking the Crimean Peninsula that juts south from Ukraine into the Black Sea. Pro-Russian demonstrations in the city of Sebastopol were the pretext. Masked Russian troops without insignias on their uniforms took over the parliament of Crimea and other strategic sites. A new pro-Russian government was installed and tainted elections were held which led to Crimea declaring independence, only to be formally incorporated into Russia just a few days later. That was the start of the Russo-Ukrainian War, of which we are witnessing a new chapter right now. Men, women, and children are dying under artillery bombardments, missile strikes, and aircraft bombings. Our hearts go out to the Ukrainian freedom fighters, to the young Russian soldiers, many of whom are being used as pawns. They apparently don't even really know what's going on and especially to the innocent civilian victims and also the refugees that are streaming toward border crossing points. This is a truly terrible time for these people. We understand Russia to be a major part of what is called in the Bible Gog and Magog, which will attempt to invade the area around Jerusalem during the millennium. We're certainly witnessing yet again a tendency to aggressive war on the part of Russia. Ukraine is better prepared now in 2022 and appears for the moment to have blunted the Russian invasion, but it's still ongoing. Most of the world is now uniting to condemn the Russian invasion and to support Ukraine short of military intervention. The words of Vladimir Putin, the strongman of Russia, indicate he's attempting to bring back under Russian control nations that were part of the Soviet system. He's afraid that having successful democracies on his borders would bring democratic ideals to spread to more people in Russia and lead potentially to a democratic revolution, which would be his downfall. He's even raised the specter of using nuclear weapons if he's resisted. This is a serious situation, which could either by design or by miscalculation, bring about a much wider war, which might involve NATO countries, several of which are right on Russia's borders. Of course, the United States is the principal military force in NATO, and by treaty, the US would be obligated to defend any attacked NATO country. According to Article 5 of the NATO Charter, an attack on any NATO country is to be considered an attack on all. This invasion has shocked many European nations. Eastern European countries have been warning against Russia's territorial designs for a long time. But Western European nations were convinced that by positive commercial relationships with Russia, peace could be maintained. They have now been disabused. In an important development, Germany, which has resisted having a large military ever since the disintegration of the Soviet Union, has not abided by its NATO commitment target to spend 2% of its gross domestic product on defense spending. But this week, the Wall Street Journal reported that Chancellor Olaf Scholz, addressing Germany's parliament, said Europe's economic powerhouse would nearly double its military spending and buy U.S.-made fighter planes for the first time in decades. The report goes on to explain that such rhetoric hadn't been heard in the Reichstag building, the historic seat of Germany's parliament in the post-World War II era. It triggered both heckling from some opposition politicians and thunderous ovations from the majority of legislators. This is a major change in Germany's attitude toward armaments and the use of military power. Daniel and Revelation both predict an end-time power centered in the territory of the former Roman Empire. This conglomeration of states will be ruled by a man called the King of the North in Daniel, Daniel 11, 41 and 42, for example, and the beast 
in Revelation 17, verses 3 to 17, and 19, verses 19 to 20. Since Germany is the most populous nation in Europe, excluding Russia, which has a different prophetic role to play, and has the dominant economy, as well as for various historical reasons, we believe the end-time autocrat will most probably come from Germany. This change in Germany's position is a step in that direction. These grave events could well be steps toward the militarization of Germany and of Europe, which would certainly be steps toward the end-time resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire. It is important for all of us to watch these events as they develop.